talk about Luxottica, which has the code in New York L-U-X-T-Y. That changed recently because of a transition they went through. So that'll make the chart a little bit hard to get, but it's basically been drifting around, not really doing much. It manufactures sunglasses, but here's the thing. It's trying to merge with French lens maker Essilor which is a fantastic business of similar scale and they're awaiting regulatory approval to do that. So if you can imagine the people who make the sunglasses and the people who make the lenses getting together. But Luxottica now has a market cap of $27.8 billion based on its ADR. It's also listed in Milan. Mm. Price earnings ratio 24.5, dividend yield of 1.7%. Wayne, what did you find as you sort of scratched around? Well, look, around? they've had a more difficult time than the other can then, you know, them and uh, Richmond and, and, and Luxottica are the two yeah. ones have had a little bit of a tough time mm. now. I mean, as you mentioned, they're trying to do the merger. They're also delisting the American ADRs. That's why the code changed. It used yeah. to be LUX and it became LUXTY. I actually owned some of these in another portfolio. It didn't yeah. actually change anything. Yeah. It was but, just but a downgrading uh, of the I ADR I must admit, program. I didn't quite understand why, because they're still on ADR, so the yes. current guys can It went trade. from a sponsored ADR to an unsponsored uh, ADR, okay. which just I means that somebody that, yeah. pays for the yeah. processing but look, of the they, dividend. Look, they're trying to battle along in very, very difficult times. They're doing a lot better in Asia when you look at their last set of results. I mean, they got Oakley, they got Ray-Bans. Yeah. But obviously, this isn't quite maybe as much luxury goods as some of the other ones. And maybe these brands yes. aren't quite as strong so as the other So Oakley and Ray-Ban and all those are fine. They also do yeah. the contract manufacture for m are these others. So if you go yeah. into a Gucci store and you see a pair of Gucci sunglasses, those will They'll be manufactured be made, made by, by them, yeah. under an arrangement, yeah. which of course is not quite but the look, same margin. They're not exposed to Asia. This is North America and Europe. They're, they're not that exposed. There's to more to come potentially in Brazil, China, India, because the sun shines out there too. Yeah, sun, sun, <laughs> look, look, I don't even own a pair of sunglasses, so I can't really, really talk here. But Europe was very good, mm. but then North American didn't seem all that spectacular. If the deal goes through, it could be a substantial benefit because then they will be the dominant player in eyewear, yeah. which is prescriptions as well as sunglasses, and that could be a more attractive you know, yeah. future pitch. For now, though, Wait and see. Well, not look, hot. I, I think oh, there we go. We managed yeah. to come up with a share chart. Look, I think we can go hot in this because, you know, as you mentioned, it one has of the got key benefits. things I should say this. One of the key things people like about the merger is that the guy who is the dominant shareholder of Luxottica is a guy called uh, Del Vecchio, who is 80 and has been sitting on like a 65% stake in the business and making a nuisance of himself. If they merge with Essilor, comes the down. CEO of Essilor becomes the CEO of the enlarged group mm. and the old man ends up only with like, you know, 40% of yeah. the shares. No, look, I'll go hot here because I think you can get huge benefits coming through from the merger. Good. All right. Let's do it. Hot on.